these planets migrate through the disk until they find a stable orbit. This is why Bellerophon is so close to its parent star. But one newly discovered world has found its stable orbit in a place no planet should ever go. Two thousand and one, the Hubble Space Telescope is directed to an obscure star some one hundred and fifty light years away from Earth, in the constellation of Pegasus. This is the same region where Bellerophon was found six years earlier. Hubble is tracking another hot Jupiter discovered by astronomer Jeff Marcy, but this one is different from Bellerophon. You've probably heard of the planet HD 209458b. It's a terrible name. A terrible name for a terrible place. HD 209458b has been dubbed by some as Osiris after the Egyptian god of the dead. Osiris is over 200 times more massive than Earth. It has migrated perilously close to its sun. At a mere 4 million miles, or almost 6.5 million kilometers from the blazing solar surface, Osiris broils in a planetary hell. The average daily temperature on Osiris is over 1,000 degrees Celsius. Forget global warming, this is global frying, and it causes Osiris to lose an estimated 500,000 metric tons of air every second. There's a leak of gas a steady stream of hydrogen and helium, and that's making a big, huge cloud all around the planet. Its atmosphere is bleeding into space. Scientists speculate that a colossal trail of gas spirals behind the planet for thousands of kilometers. Osiris presents an unprecedented opportunity for astronomers. Using Hubble, they analyze the alien planet's bloated atmosphere. This is the absolutely first time where we could tell what is the composition of the atmosphere of an extrasolar planet. Surprisingly, Hubble detects many of the basic chemicals needed for life. Sodium, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. But Osiris is far too hot for life as we know it. There may be other forms of life, however, that thrive on higher temperatures. But there's no solid surface as we know it on a hot Jupiter. So this life would have to be just tiny little microbes floating around on aerosols. And on our own Earth, we have life that floats around in our atmosphere. But that life didn't start there. So life almost certainly would not exist on hot Jupiters. Astronomers have discovered many hot Jupiters since Bellerophon was found in 1995. But conditions on these worlds rule them out as places where the drama of life can unfold. However, one of these gas giants is a planet that teases the rules of evolution. Astronomer Jeff Marcy discovers something shocking about a planet orbiting a star called 16 Cygnus b, located some 70 light years away in the constellation of Cygnus, the Swan. The planet was clearly in an elongated orbit, bringing the planet close to and then far from the host star. And this, of course, defied our expectations based on our own solar system, where all of the planets go around our sun in nearly circular orbits like phonograph grooves in a record. Like a giant yo-yo in space, the gas giant swings back and forth across its solar system. 
That's like the Earth swooping 25 million miles, more than 40 million kilometers closer to the sun, then slinging past Mars all the way out towards Jupiter every year. And like all of the gas giants in our solar system, this yo-yo planet probably has an entourage of moons. Marcy speculates that one of these moons could be similar to Earth. And here's where the interesting story begins. Imagine a rocky moon with lakes, oceans, maybe streams and waterfalls on the surface. The moon orbiting its planet the two of them orbiting the host star. Unlike the airless moon that circles the Earth, this moon is a world with extreme seasons. On Earth, the seasons are caused by the tilt of our planet. Here, they're caused by the elongated orbit. These poor planets that are in these elongated elliptical orbits suffer terrible changes in their climate throughout a year. As they make their closest approach, the yo-yo planet and its moon are blowtorched by the star. Summer begins. The atmosphere on the Earth-like moon is savaged by raging storms. Category 5 hurricanes on Earth are tiny eddies compared to the monster vortexes that form here. The clouds thicken as the water evaporates. Temperatures rise dramatically. Any water or gases would heat up, and indeed the oceans would boil into steam, so you'd end up with a big steam bath. During the peak of the summer, the entire moon is smothered in temperatures of more than 400 degrees Celsius. This is the closest approach to the star. During its 26-month orbit, the summer season is barely two months long. But what a season. The planet and its moon swing away from the furnace of the star. Temperatures fall to ranges we would find temperate and comfortable. With the coming of autumn, the rains return to the parched and roasted moon. Dry ocean basins are replenished, and the seas arise to form new shorelines. Tranquility prevails as the yo-yo planet and its moon slip into the deep freeze of winter. Now over 200 million miles, more than 320 million kilometers from the star, the daytime sky is dark. Temperatures hover around minus 160 degrees Celsius. The oceans freeze and the polar ice caps expand across the moon's surface into a globe-girdling sheet of ice many kilometers thick. Winters are long, lasting 17 months. With the coming of spring, the sun looms large in the skies over this hapless moon as the ice cracks and melts violently. Huge icebergs carve into a stormy and fast-rising ocean. For two preciously short periods, during the spring thaw and the autumn rains, the climate on this Earth-like moon is balmy and comfortable. At a distance of 93 million miles, or 150 million kilometers from the star, roughly the same distance as Earth from the Sun, the elliptical orbit of this planet and its moon crosses an area around the star some scientists call the Goldilocks Zone. The conditions here 
are just right for life. If you're too close to the star, then it's too hot. If you're too far away, then it's going to be too cold and everything's going to be icy. But then if you're right in the middle, it's just right. 